to our nose, where special sensors help us smell it. Ah, does it ever smell good? Oh, everybody has a different looking nose. And the name is Proboscis. Mr. Proboscis. But some noses really look different. Like an elephant. Elephant noses are called trunks. Its noses are called snouts. My nose is called a beak. But remember, all these noses are used to smell, which helps us tell different objects and odors from each other. So my nose can smell an apple pie and know that it is not a pile of old fish heads. Yuck. I beg your pardon? As you have already learned, Teddy, your nose can tell good odors from bad odors. Sometimes our nose can help keep us safe, like when we smell the odor of smoke. Whenever we smell smoke, we should tell somebody right away, just in case there's a fire. Now, let's see if we have a nose for all this. <laughs> Pick out the part of your body which is used to smell. This is a nose, and you use it to smell odors. Pick out the animal with the biggest nose. on the screen has a smell or odor that would warn us of danger. This is a fire, and it gives off the smell of smoke, which is a warning sign. Thanks, Mr. Proboscis. Yum, yum, this apple pie sure tastes good. Oh, yes, it does, Teddy. And that reminds us to move on to taste, another of our five senses. We taste with our tongue, which is in our mouth. We taste with our tongues, I taste with our tongues. I wasn't always fat like this, but when I was young, learned we taste with our tongues. It was such fun, must have tasted everything before I was done. Honey tastes sweet, lemon tastes sour, and nothing as salty as pretzel chowder. I taste hot, licorice bitter, and I love the taste of the cold vapor fritter. Some food is wet. Some food is dry, even you are bogged about the taste of a fly. Each and every food makes our taste but say, Hey, you really like it or take it away. Ooh. Our tongue works together with our nose to tell us whether our food is sweet, sour, salty, or bitter. Your tongue also tells you whether your food is hot like soup, or cold like ice cream, hard like a candy cane, or soft like mashed potatoes. Which part of our mouth do we use to taste food? This is our tongue, and we use it to taste. Which of these foods taste sour? This is lemon, and it has a sour taste. Which of these foods taste sweet?
notice the red button feels hard and bumpy? More comparing words. Right, Teddy. Our sense of touch helps us tell the difference between something hard, like the button, and something soft, like a pillow. Soft things are cuddly. I just want to hug them. And when you do, mm. you feel with all of your skin. Not just the skin on my fingers and hands? Right. All your skin has feelings. Try this. With one finger, touch the tip of your nose. Now touch your mouth. Now touch your ear. Wow! I can feel my nose with my finger, and my finger with my nose. It got the part of the body that you touch with most often. This is a hand with skin and fingers. And when we want to feel something, this is the part of our body we use. Pick out the object that would feel soft and cuddly. This fluffy pillow would feel soft and cuddly. Now let's pick out the thing we should never touch. This is a picture of fire. And you should always stay away from fire, because it'll burn your skin and hurt you very badly. Fire is very hot, and the stove in the kitchen is another thing that could be hot and dangerous. I think we've learned a lot today about our senses, how we see, hear, and smell, and how we taste and touch. It's time to study with Peach and Teddy and to learn about yourself with our friend Mr. Dipper. A very happy yellow. Now Roger's sad, he feels real bad, they call him a funny name. Mr. Dipper's gonna teach him to feel proud, he's not the same. Roger, what's wrong? You look a little unhappy. I am. I was remembering about walking through the playground yesterday, and somebody called me Featherface and then started to laugh at me. I'm sorry to hear that, Roger. Me too, Roger. But don't let what other people say bother you. You know you're a good bird, and we think you're pretty special, too. Really? That's right. Roger is special. And so are you, Penelope, and you, Teddy, and all your friends. Every boy and girl is special. Why do you say that? Because there's no one in the world exactly like you, Roger. You are the one and only you. That's what makes you special. You and all your friends should never forget how truly special you are. Each of you is one and only you, and I am the one and only me. Each of us is someone no one else can be. Sure, every bird has feathers, and every fish has scales. Every single teddy bear has a stubby sort of tail. But Roger, you are a special bird. You are a special bird to me. And Penelope, you are different than the other fish I see. And you know lots of teddy bears, but I'm sure you agree that each of you is the one and only you, and I am the one and only me. Roger, I once heard about an elephant who hated his trunk. He kept getting in the way, he said. So he traded with a bird. The bird got the trunk, and the elephant got a beak. Well, they quickly realized this wasn't going to work. The bird couldn't fly. The elephant couldn't reach his food. They were both pretty sad and wanted their own noses back. And when they got them, whoop, were they glad to be themselves again. Pick out the elephant who's happy. Here's the elephant who's happy. He has his own trunk back. Find the bird who's happy. Here's the bird who's happy. He has his own beak back. What else makes everyone so special? Oh, lots of things. The way we look, the way we play, the way we talk. Every person is different. That's what makes all our friends so much fun. Let's hear what our friend Mr. Dipper has to say about this. My name's Mr. Dipper. I am the elf who will teach you to feel good about yourself. When I look into a mirror, I think to myself, I sure am lucky I'm not someone else. Whoa!